Hello everyone, are you looking for a PC build with a low budget? In this video I'm going to build a gaming PC with an under $300 budget that is capable of gaming in 2023. Hit the like button and let's start. The goal here is to build Bank for the Bug gaming PC, which means I'll try to get the best performance out of our $300 budget. So if the upgrade path is important to you, you better check this $400 PC build instead. You can build it for even cheaper nowadays. Some time ago I came across this $100 motherboard set on Amazon, so this video is a good excuse to test it out. It is sold by a brand called B Winner. Cut my attention because it has Amazon Prime delivery and it is eligible for return. So two days later it's here packed pretty well, in the box we have a motherboard with an IO shield and SATA cable. It's a no-name mini ITX board with an X58 chipset, with some basic audio and USB ports on the back, I believe it's USB 2.0. We have PCIe 3.0 slot and pretty solid radiators. Unfortunately we don't have an M.2 here, so we stick to SATA ports. It has a two plates of DDR3 RAM installed, each 4GB, so we have a total of 8GB with 1300MHz clock speed. It is probably used, I was actually expecting one 8GB plate, like in the pictures, but I guess dual channel is even better. This green CPU cooler is pretty easy to remove, let's wipe the thermal paste and check our CPU. It is an Intel Xeon X5650, which is a server CPU released in 2010. It is obviously used, has 6 core 12 threads with a 2.6GHz base frequency, turbo boost up to 3GHz and 12MB of smart cache. Let's apply a fresh coat of thermal paste and install the CPU cooler back. It is a simple 3 pin cooler with an aluminum radiator. Our CPU TDP is 95 watts. We'll see how it handles temperatures in the test. So, for $100 we are getting a CPU with cooling, motherboard and RAM. Great this deal or not we'll decide later. Now let's find storage, graphics card and power supply. For storage I bought a 480GB Kingsman A400 for $25. This is a very popular SSD, I have no doubt about it. Prices on SATA SSDs drop you can find pretty good SSD for even less money. For the graphics card I decided to go with an RX 580 2048 SP. For $100 that is the price I paid, unfortunately they raised it, but you can find cheaper alternative. I think it's a great price to performance deal, even though it performs not exactly like the real 580. Key features are 8GB of GDDR5 memory, good port configuration, solid cooling, TDP is 185 watts, so it requires an 8 pin connector. You can check my previous video for more info and tests. Next, for PSU I decided to use the one I had at the moment, it's Thermaltek BX1 with 650 watts capacity. We don't need that much wattage, any adequate 450 to 500 watts power supply will do it. For example, this 500 watts Thermaltek Smart. But I don't want to wait for another delivery, so I'll go with this one. Finally, let's find a case. At the moment I didn't find anything on sale, so I went with a $39 case from the DIY PC. It is a cheap, very lightweight case with two orange fans and some basic front panel. I wanted to stay on a budget, so that's the best option I had. Let's install our motherboard. Always make sure standoffs are tight in place. Next goes a power supply. We have some opening with a dust filter on the bottom of the case, so that will be an intake. SSD goes on top of the tray. Thankfully, we have SATA cable from the motherboard set, so don't need to worry about that. Now let's connect cables. The motherboard comes with no instructions whatsoever but it connects as usual, USB, audio, CPU, 24 pins with SATA and power buttons with indication. Unfortunately we don't have USB 3.0 on our motherboard so just leaving it. Let's finally install a graphics card in the port. Motherboard has an unusual GPU clip but everything went smoothly. An 8 pin connector goes in and it's done. Now I have to figure out how to manage these cables so the side panel closes. It took a lot of time and zip ties but it's also done. Finally the moment of truth and we see a BIOS postcode, which means this build works. Everything seems to be recognized, we just need to install Windows on it and we can put a side panel on. After updating the system and GPU driver, let's run a couple of benchmarks. Windows 10 recognized all hardware, unfortunately motherboard supports only SATA 2.0, so the speeds are 270 for read and 250 megabits per second for write. RAM is running on 1300MHz frequency, the CPU works fine, let's hit that bench button 
button and we are getting 237 points in single and 1800 in multi-thread. That's around the same as i7 2600k results. In 3 Mark, getting almost 3600 points. That's not bad at all. GPU temperature was staying under 60 degrees all time, but CPU temperature almost hit 79 degrees. Looks like the CPU cooler is having a hard time, but it's keeping the temperature below 80 degrees. Let's test some games now. I'll start from less and move to more demanding games. In Valorant on high settings full HD, getting 100 to 140 FPS range. Frame time looks good, although catching micro freezes sometimes. In CSGO, high settings full HD, getting 90 to 150 FPS most of the time with a straight frame time. You can see all 12 CPU threads in use. Moving to more demanding competitive titles, in Apex Legends with medium high settings, FPS varies from 55 to 85 depending on what's happening on the screen. With some competitive settings I found on web, getting 70 plus FPS most of the time. In both cases the frame time looks pretty good. Next PUBG with high settings and max field of view seeing 50 to 60 FPS with drops to 40 sometimes and some freezes. But on medium settings I got 60 plus most of the time even with some raises to 80 FPS. And the frame time looks much better now. So this build performs fine in online games but of course we can already see some bottleneck issues. Moving to single player games in Elden Ring medium settings with motion blur off seeing console around 45 FPS. Next Spider-Man Miles Morales with the graphics settings set to very low and FSR 2.0 in balanced mode getting 40 to 60 FPS while swinging with drops to around 35 in fights. The frame time is not perfect but overall it's playable. As you can see because of the CPU bottleneck graphics card cannot show its full potential and we have to tune the game settings like that. In Days Gone with medium high settings with the max field of view getting 45 to 60 FPS with a good frame time. This game loads our Xeon well and the max temperature I saw is 73 degrees. I also tried running Hogwarts Legacy on this build but even on low settings and FSR in ultra performance mode getting lots of drops especially in the fights. So this build turned more like an experiment. We do get more FPS in game compared to the $400 build but this build has some serious downs as well like CPU bottleneck, only SATA 2 speeds, low frequency 8GB RAM. As you can see modern game RAM demand is increasing. I would not recommend this build because of the no upgrade path. You'll have to switch CPU, motherboard and RAM to get this build upgraded. On the other hand, getting more game performance for the price right away may interest somebody. Even with bottleneck, this RX 580 delivers a more pleasant gaming experience than the integrated graphics. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. I put a lot of work into this video so make sure to leave a like and I see you in the next videos.